All right, guys, in this one, we want to try to determine the arc length of one cycle of a cycloid. So remember, the cycloid's formula is given by f of theta, the parametric formula, uh, is equal to, so x of theta is r times theta minus sine of theta, and y of theta is equal to r times 1 minus cosine of theta. All right, and one cycle of this cycloid, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi corresponds to one complete rotation of the circle that's used to trace it out. Um, okay, so that's good. Now further remember that the arc length element, ds, this thing is equal to dx squared plus dy squared, and that dx is just equal to x dot of theta, d theta, dy is equal to y dot of theta, d theta, so, putting this all together, what we end up with is that ds, the arc length element, is equal to the sum of the squares, x dot squared plus y dot squared, and then outside of that, times d theta. So this is what we have to integrate to find the arc length of one cycle of the cycloid. So, uh, let's work it out. First of all, x dot is equal to r times 1 minus cosine of theta y dot is equal to just r sine of theta. We need to square these and then add them up and then take the square root. So x dot squared, this is just going to be r squared times 1 minus cosine of theta, which is r squared times 1 um, minus 2 cosine of theta plus cosine squared theta y dot squared is just, I'll write it over here, r squared sine squared theta. This is multiplied, but I'm writing it like this because we're going to add these up. When we add these up, this r squared is a factor, so that's times everything. And when we add these two, these two add up to just 1 by the Pythagorean theorem. So what we end up with then is that x dot squared plus y dot squared is equal to r squared times 1 plus 1, so 2 minus 2 cosine of theta. And this tells us then that our ds, the thing that we need to integrate, remember arc length is just the integral of ds. This arc length element is just going to be, we can factor a 2 out of this, right? So this is going to be square root of 2 times r times the square root of 1 minus cosine theta d theta. Okay? So, this is what we want to integrate. Our arc length is then the integral from 0 to 2 pi of this factor, root 2, times r, times the square root, 1 minus cosine of theta, d theta. And somehow we have to integrate this. The square root of 2 and the r, those are both constants. So square root of 2 times r can come outside. We still have to figure out what to do with this square root of 1 minus cosine theta, d theta. If this was cosine squared, we'd be in luck, um, but it's not, right? Um, so what are we going to do with this square root? Well, we can look at this, and we can think about, you know, where did this come from in some sense, or we can try to use trig identities to get rid of this. And one of the trig identities that we can use is this one. So I'm going to write this one as sine squared u is equal to 1 half minus 1 half uh, cosine of 2u. Okay, I'm trying to get it to look like this, but I don't know if the theta is the right angle. And so multiplying through and taking a square root, what we end up with is that square root of 2 times the square root of sine squared of u is equal to the square root of 1 minus cosine of 2u. Okay, the dogs are very excited about this. So now we just compare this term with this term. And it's going to be a one-for-one one substitution, except we have to figure out what u is, right? So in this scenario, our u should be equal to 2 theta, which means that our theta should become, uh, what, u over 2, right? Sorry, I've got this backwards. The 2u, the dogs have distracted me. I'm sorry. So... Um, the 2u should be equal to theta, so that u itself is equal to theta over 2. That makes a lot more sense. And so then what we're, the like-for-like like substitution that we're going to make is that square root of 2 times the square root of sine squared of theta over 2, this is going to be equal to the square root of 1 minus cosine 
of theta, which is what we have, right? So we go back up here to our integral. We've got root two times r, integral zero to two pi. This term is now going in for our integrand. So we've got square root of two. And then anytime you take a square root of a square, you end up with absolute value of sine of theta over two, d theta. This square root two and this square root two can be combined, it just becomes a two, obviously. The r is there, and what we now need to think about is what's going on with this thing. So um, this just becomes two r integral zero to two pi. Now, sine of theta, so remember how sine, where it's the y value on the unit circle. So sine of pi over two, for, as sine of theta over two, as theta goes from zero to two pi, just traverses the upper half of the unit circle. And sine is the y value, right? So sine is always non-negative for those values. So we can actually drop the absolute value bars. And this just becomes sine of theta over two d theta. That's what we have to integrate. And this is no big deal, right? So let's compute, finish off this integral. We get two times r times antiderivative of sine of theta over two is gonna be negative two cosine of theta over two plug in theta equals two, 2 pi and theta equals zero. And so this is two r times negative two cosine of pi minus a negative, so plus two cosine of zero. This is a negative one, becomes a positive two, so cosine of pi is negative one, so this becomes two plus two, that's four. We end up with eight times r. And so the arc length of one cycle of the cycloid is 8 times r. r is the radius of the circle that was used to build the cycloid.